Welcome to this short video on how to create a new vendor record in Net Suite. This video is presented by Business Solution Partners. Today I'll show you how to access the new vendor form where you can create your vendor record. I'll show you how to create the vendor name and ID, how to select subsidiaries associated with your vendor, how to add information for contact purposes. I'll also go over how to enter financial information for your vendor such as payment terms, bank payment details, tax ID number, and the currencies that you want to be able to pay this vendor in. And at the end, I'll show you how you can initiate some transactions from the vendor form, like adding a bill or purchase order to your vendor, and also viewing transaction history once you have records associated with the vendor. To create a new vendor record in NetSuite, you go to Vendors, List, Vendors, and New. This will bring you to the Vendor Setup page where you can set up a vendor as a company or individual. An individual will be the case of an independent contractor and if you click Individual under Type here, you'll be able to set up an, a contractor by first name, last name. We're going to set up a company today. And I'm going to call my company the NBC Company. If you have the autofill box selected over here, your vendor ID will default to the company name. Once I tap out of the company name, you can see that the vendor ID is now NBC Company. If you uncheck auto, you are able to change the vendor ID to anything you want following your company's procedures. Next, you're going to select the subsidiary that you're opening this vendor for. I'm opening my vendor for the Gill Inc. HQ entity. In the comments box, you can enter comments related specifically to this vendor. For example, this vendor prefers to be paid via ACH only. If you have a web address for your vendor, you can enter it here. If you use templates or forms to create your vendors, you can select the form that you want to use. These forms are uh, created in a different functionality within NetSuite, and we'll be covering that in a different video. If you um, use categories to track your vendors and expenses, you can select the categories here. And the categories, again, are set up uh, outside of this, uh, this, this form. Under email, you can enter the email address for uh, correspondence with the vendor. I'm going to create the AP at NBC.com email for this vendor, or I'm going to add, rather, a phone number for the vendor. Under phone, I'm going to add my phone number here. Uh, if you have a fax number, you can enter it here under fax. The address is grayed out at this point because we enter the address on a different section down here. If you want to use a different email address for payment notification, you can enter it here, but I'm going to copy and just copy and paste in the same email that I had before. And now we get to this tab where we have to enter different information to complete setup. The first one is under subsidiaries. You can add additional subsidiaries that you want this vendor to be linked to. I now only have one, but if you wanted to add more, you just click on Add. And if you have other, other entities set up for your company, you'll be able to select them here. I'm going to be working with just one. In the relationships, you can add contact information for corresponding with this vendor. I'm going to add Mr. Joe Smith, a title, he's going to be the CFO, he's the contact for this subsidiary. I can add an email address and a phone number and a role. Under communication, you can initiate a communication with this vendor, or once you have communicated with this vendor, you will be able to come back here and see audit trail of all the communication that took place within NetSuite with this vendor. Under address is where you enter the address for this vendor. This address right now, if you leave this box checked, is going to be the defaulting address for shipping 
and billing. So you can make changes to this. You can have different addresses for different purposes. To add an address, we go here under Edit and click on the Edit icon, and the address box comes up. You can have the correspondence go to the attention of someone at the company. So I'm going to say I want my correspondence to go to Miss Mary Smith. And the form is defaulting to the company's name as the addressee, so you can edit this. And I'm going to say that Miss Mary is in the marketing department. You can add a different phone number at this point for Mary, rather than, let's say, the, the number that we used before was the main number. You can have a specific phone number for Mary. And at the address, I'm going to say that she uh, is, her uh, correspondence should go to 123 Main Street. And that is in Boston. Now you can see that this section over here is filled, up, filled in. If you were changing an address for a vendor that's already set up, in some cases you may have to check the override um, box to update the address. Now that we're done, I'm going to click OK. This address box is still not filled in, but once we save the vendor, it will autofill. We completed the address, and now we're going to move on to some financial data that we need to complete for this vendor. So going up here to the start, the legal name of the vendor is defaulting to the company's name. The currency is defaulting to the USD because my subsidiary for this vendor is a US-based company. If you have an account number with this vendor, you can enter it here. If you want to include a default expense account number or account name for your uh, charges from this vendor, you can select it here. The default payables account is where bills are going to be posted to on the balance sheet. Mm -hmm. And usually it's the account payable account. So we're going to select that. You can add terms, uh, payment terms to your vendor over here. If you have a credit limit with this vendor, uh, you can add that in here. Then we move to the tax information. Tax ID number for this vendor, which you, you will get from your vendor's W-9. Once you confirm that the vendor is eligible for 1099 uh, reporting at year end, you will check this box. And that's uh, some validation that you have to do internally with your team. If the vendor payments are subject to withholding taxes, you select the code here and we'll be covering taxes in a different video. If you are transitioning or migrating this vendor from another system and the, the vendor had an opening balance, the time of the migration, you can enter the opening balance for this vendor over here and the period as of which the balance is open. If your company uses a purchasing module, there are some setups that you have to do here to make sure the, uh, the three-way matching with, the, with your purchase order, shipping, and billing takes place. We'll be covering purchasing in a different video. Under currencies, remember that my vendor is defaulting to USD, but under currencies here at the bottom of this form, you can actually add different currencies for this vendor. So if this vendor also can invoice you in euros, you just select euros. And now this vendor can also invoice you in Europe. To click on ACH, you can enter banking information for this vendor, such as bank name, routing account number. This will be, this will be the information used to process ACH payments for this vendor. Now we're done with the financial section, and we move over to the systems information. Here you can give access to this vendor to, your, to some uh, parts of your NetSuite account. It's not typical, but it may happen uh, with some companies. You can grant access, create a password, and then send a password or an email confirmation to the vendor. If the vendor becomes inactive, uh, this is oh, after settling all opening balance with them, this is where you come in and you mark the vendor as inactive. Under bank payment details, this is where you select whether EFT billing is acceptable for this vendor. Under skills and exper expertise, you can get some information about the U.S. experience for this vendor, and that might be um, used for independent contractors. 
So we're done at this point and we will click save. And once the system is done saving, you will be able to use this vendor for um, to create invoices and process payments. And now my vendor is completely set up. At this point, you're able to process invoices, and we're not going to go in details into those um, functionalities, but you will be able to add a bill from here, create a purchase order, initiate, initiate email with this vendor. Also, if you have the access to make changes to the vendors, you can edit the vendor. Once you have transactions for this vendor, you can view all transactions. And you can start a new vendor at this point as well. We hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions about any of the features described in the video or need training or support with NetSuite managers or transactions, please contact Business Solution Partners at the email or phone number on the screen. Business Solution Partners is a NetSuite partner and a management and consulting firm specializing in cloud-based system implementations. Their staff members and management team include CPAs and certified solution developers with over 25 years of experience in accounting and system implementation. Visit us at bsbny.com or follow us on Twitter and other social media.